How do you describe what your career is? A path of serendipity, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh, because, you know, again, I had other ideas and I found myself doing something very different that I was planning at the beginning. What did you plan to be? I, when I was, you know, a young uh, fellow going to medical school in Italy, you, you got there at 18 years old, so rather young. Mm -hmm. um, I knew two things. One, I want to do research, but still have patients contact. That's the reason why I went for an MD rather than a PhD. And two, I want to make an impact of a difference in the life of people. So I was very, I would say, naive and, and, and a, a dreamer. And idealistic. I thought, very idealistic. Mm -hmm. yeah. I thought that, you know, cancer was, you know, the most impactful science to get into. And that's what I had the idea to go for. Huh. But you knew that you wanted to be in medicine and that you wanted to have uh, an impact. What did you do to prepare yourself to be appropriately positioned so that you could be accepted into medical school? So uh, I, I had very clear from the very beginning that, you know, making life of individual better was my goal. Um, so, a, 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 and I remember my grandfather that said, are you absolutely sure that you want to go to medical school? Because this is not a job. It's not a profession. It's really a mission. A matter of fact, the old physician, we're all monks, we're all people that dedicate that you know, just entire life to this. So you're not going to have a life. And I, and I was pretty adamantly sure that, you know, that's what I want to do. So that was your mindset. Absolutely. So you go to a university in Italy. Yep. You study medicine. Yep. Then what happened? So, uh, you know, in Italy, you had six years uh, to, to go through medical school. And then you have four years of, you know, residency program. You cannot do research the first year because it's very intense. You have to do all the basics. But as soon as I could, the second year, I will start to look for a, a, an internship to do research. And I stumbled upon this gentleman that just came back from the University of Chicago where he went for a sabbatical that was a pediatric gastroenterologist. And again, I had no interest in doing that. No, you were interested in cancer. Absolutely. Yeah. And he said, you know, listen, do you really want to be impactful? We lose many more kids with diarrheal diseases that all the other diseases combined. Five million kids will not make by the end of the year. Five million. That's right. We're a little bit better, but still we're talking about the huge number of kids that they die for infectious disease, particularly diarrhea disease in the first two years of life. Wow. And then, you know, that was really a revelation to me. So that that become, you so know, you definitely. Course. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I saw the value. Yeah. And of course, when you talk about diarrhea disease, you talk about infection. So, yeah. Um, Which I started, is in keeping with the work that you're doing now. Absolutely. But yeah. again, I didn't know that time. No. Nobody knew about the microbiome. There was no <laughs> such a thing. My only desire was to understand how we cross communicate with pathogens, with microorganisms that make us sick, to try to understand what kind of tools they use so that we can disarm them. And that was, was pretty much the focus of my initial career. And in Italy, because of the school where I was, they were very strong in human physiology. So I focused in my first part of research career on the host, you know, part of the coin. The flip of the coin being microorganisms, I asked my boss, where should I go to learn now the other side of the moon, so to speak? And he said, you know, there is one place that you should go. The best place in is in Baltimore, in the United States, it's called Center for Vaccine Development. You should go there to learn how microorganisms cross talk with us. This was 1988. I was supposed to be eight months, I mean, four months there. I'm still in the United States. So you had no idea that you, at, at, at early on in your life, that you would wind up living in the United States? Not at all. Yeah. Not at all. The plan and the money that I had available was barely enough for four months. So there was absolutely no Well, plan. you've done a good job of stretching it out. <laughs> well, I'm telling you that <laughs> yeah, there have been tough times, you yeah. know, during the winter, which we could not afford the, the right coats, uh, and we had to stretch the money. And, and then myself and my family went through a harsh time. Mm -hmm. But, uh, you know, again, uh, um, with, with the support and help of, you know, the colleagues in the United States that they saw the value to keep my dear, eventually, you know, we end up to, you know, uh, stay and... Uh, no regrets whatsoever. So you start to study diarrhea in essence, and uh, but it's a very difficult uh, 
malady to uh, to address and put a stop to. Um, yeah, um, and, and again, we still... must have been very challenging. Very. Yeah. And, and, and again, we still lose the battle with microorganisms because as many, you know, weapons you threw to them, they threw back, you know, the counter weapons and then, then you know, they remain as a major issue in developing countries for sure. We made some strides, of course, because we understood a little bit more a variety of business. But I'm telling you, and it's another serendipitous parts of my career, the more I was trying to focus on diarrheal diseases, the more the results of my science pushed me out of it. But I was trying to be disciplined and said, listen, Alessio, you need to focus on diarrheal diseases. And, you know, systematically, you know, the results pushed me in a different directions, mainly in chronic inflammation, autoimmunity, and so on and so forth, until at the end I gave up. And I said, you know, there must be a reason why God, Mother Nature, whatever you want to call it, tells you mm -hmm. you got to go to that direction, and I give in. Well, and now when you take a look at the work that you're doing, it truly is having an impact. Um, you or are, know, you, are you concerned that maybe it's not having the uh, quite the same kind of impact that you had hoped for? No, no. I mean, you know, again, I, uh, once again, the goal is really to improve quality of life mm -hmm. and, and to give that little contribution to science and move, uh, you know, our knowledge forward mm -hmm. to achieve the goal that I was telling you longer and healthier lives. Uh, I have to say that, again, um, you know, science sometimes is incremental, sometimes it's transformational. You don't choose. And I was blessed to stumble upon some transformational science that is really changing some science uh, paradigms. Okay, and what was that science? Because not everybody will know your, your background. Just tell them what that was. Well, what was that transformational uh, moment. <laughs> so it was <laughs> stemming from a, a, a tremendous failure trying to develop mm -hmm. a vaccine for yeah. cholera that was an ASTLS, mm -hmm. one of the major culprits of diarrheal disease in, chi in children. And, 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 you know, the outcome of that, you know, exercise was miserable. It was a failure pretty much. But that failure led us to a discovery of a new molecule that led us to the discovery of Zonulin that probably is the most important contribution uh, that I give to science so far, because this seems to be a molecule that is involved in so many diseases. Well, and if it can inform people to make changes in their life, let alone, you know, having to deal with it from a biological or a physiological perspective, you've done your work. Yeah, I mean, again, uh, uh, science is uh, is Pandora's box. You open one, and then mm -hmm. there's another one, another one. So we'll never stop. Yeah. But I have to say that you know there are some specific milestones that we're able to achieve, uh, meaning that you know now we know that to develop these conditions, uh, genes and environments are not sufficient. So you have to have a leaky gut, and zonin is involved in that. Mm -hmm. You have to have an immune system that is hyper belligerent. And you have to have a microbiome that goes off balance. And they all interact with each other. So that gives us new target for possible intervention to try to stop these epidemics. So somebody who's looking at you going, oh, yeah, I want to be like you. You're out speaking at conferences. You're traveling around. You do a wide variety of things. But they have no idea what your typical day looks like. What does a <laughs> typical day for well, somebody who is that's... a researcher actually look like? <laughs> well, you know, I wake up uh, rather early. Um, I changed my lifestyle in line of what, you know, we were discussing before. So I mainly walk to and use public transportation to go to work. Um, and, uh, you know, I have been, you know, becoming humble enough to understand that it takes a village of complementary expertise to make a difference. So my role is to build these teams of very talented and dedicated individuals that with humility, they sit around the table trying to really improve the quality of life for people that they entrust in their work. Um, and, and that's and I'm trying to facilitate, you know, this kind of, of, of you know, uh, science and, and clinical care. Um, so I spend a fair amount of time in, you know, teaching and, uh, you know, managing, uh, you know, a, a large group of, of scientists and, and clinicians 
that they are focused on this kind of roles. So roles. do you spend your time in the lab or is it I you're do. More, the more that you're interacting with your team members, discussing, analyzing, trying to make sense of what they are, the information that they're, that they're gathering? So I physically, mm -hmm. I am in the lab, but unfortunately I don't have the time anymore to take a pipette and do an experiment that for me it was the most rewarding part of what I was doing when I was a researcher. So mm -hmm. um, I, my, my contribution now is more intellectual than and come up with ideas, design the experiments, advise, you know, how to troubleshoot uh, the outcomes that in general are not what you expect. Right. Um, so but, you, but you couldn't do your job if you hadn't done that work in the lab earlier on in your career. Absolutely not. Because you wouldn't be able to make sense of uh, what, uh, you're, what you're seeing. Absolutely not. Yeah. If, if I have to give an advice of a young fellow that is interested in, in getting medicine, I was strongly advised at some point to find some time to spend time in the lab, as well as the people they spend time in the lab to find some time to spend time on the ward so that you really mm -hmm. understand, you know, what you're doing and for whom, because otherwise you, keep, uh, you lose track of what is the purpose of all our, you know, professional life here. Which is to improve the quality of people's lives. Absolutely. It's been an extraordinary career. Yeah, I, I had a good ride, I have to say. Oh, well, I don't think it's over somehow. I, no, but, you know, again, I am at the point in which, you know, I'm over the edge and I'm now <laughs> starting to go downhill in terms of the last one in my career. But it's been a joy and a privilege, really, um, you know, to, to have given that little contribution that I was able to. Well, and your help, you helped set up what uh, appears to be a really exciting time in research. Well, you know, again, uh, what is left when you retire is the legacy that you leave behind. For me, legacy means a, a school, a team, a, a group of individuals that have really been forged to continue that kind of path. Because otherwise, when you, you know, decide to retire and do something better in life, like, I don't know, uh, making wine, uh, that's one of my dreams. Uh, you, you don't want all that investment dissipated. And, and I'm in great hands. I have the privilege to really work with, with an extremely talented individual that I'm pretty sure that will continue well, you know, that line of research. Well, good. And I hope that your career inspires others to follow similar paths. I hope so, too. Thank you.